Hi, Spellcasters. Today, I wanted to talk about three tips that you can use to work magic to change a system that you don't like that you're part of, or aspects of that system. First has to do with building up your safe space. Second has to do with minding your myths. And third, study other traditions. So if you're an advanced witch and you feel like you can run with that, then go cast your spells, make your fabulous juju happen. If you want to know more, then just keep listening. When I talk about developing your safe space, I'm talking about developing your magic circle, that's in my tradition, or whatever kind of safe place you're going to be working your magic in. And this starts with having a physical place that you're safe. That could be behind a locked door, that could be somewhere remote in nature, that could be somewhere that somebody else is guarding for you. It could be any kind of physical space. One recommendation I would make is that if you are going for systemic change and you traditionally work your magic inside a church, a church is one of the pillars that holds up our system of thought. That might not be the easiest place to get the kind of freedom that you need to really work your magic and explore other ways of thinking. Okay, but back to this idea of your safe space. So you have your physical space, which could be a different one every time, but when you go to work your magic, you go somewhere emotionally that's sort of the same. It's uh, outside of our culture, outside of time, outside of words, to a place in your imagination where you feel 100% safe and 100% strong. And the more time that you spend in that world and exploring magic and things that strengthen your identity and strengthen how you see yourself, for me, the feminine archetype is really key to me feeling more powerful when you come back to the mundane world and you confront a system that you object to, you are so much stronger and ready to push back and, and start to make the changes that you wanna see through your actions through what you expect from other people because you've developed that somewhere where you can see it. It's really hard to see how you want the world to be when you're in the middle of what you don't want it to be. You have to go to another mental, psychic, magical place in order to bring that back. So when I talk about minding our myths, our shared stories are really the embodiment of our cultural values. So we have, of course, the legal systems, and we're not gonna change those particularly with magic, but we have the values that we share that drive those systems, and those come from our stories. And our, as our stories change, our culture changes. Most of the stories that we share are, are movies these days. That's where we hear our stories, that's we watch television, we watch movies. It's a cultural sharing that we do. And I know everybody has their own movies that they like to watch, but in general, we're watching movies and we're, we're getting the majority of our mythology from those. This isn't necessarily what you think, but it's what you think other people think. You saw it on TV, you saw all those people share those values. Therefore, you know this is our shared values. Well, 90% of those are being expressed by white men. What we can do is we can select really carefully what kinds of stories we're going to subject ourselves to, what kinds of stories we're going to even listen to in order to affect our belief about the world around us, about what our priorities are, how people should be thought of. And by editing out, say, movies that are written, directed by men, and have five lead characters that are all male, or all white, or all whatever it is we don't want, by selecting carefully our media, we can tell ourselves different stories than what we've heard before. And this can very much influence the reality that we live in and the, the expectations we have for other people, and those expectations will drive our policies and our laws. So this is a very real piece of magic, just selecting your media. And there's other media you can choose too, which is much more subversive. Books are so subversive. 
<laughs> I've been so getting into books on tape and coming soon, there's going to be a, a little video on all my reviews of my favorite books that I'm recommending to you. But uh, really be careful about what you watch, who's made it, who's written it, who's directing it, what kinds of characters are in it. You don't need to dive in if you can see just by the way it's being promoted that it's not going to be representative of the point of view that you want replicated and shared in the world. The last of my tips is so in completely obvious that I don't feel it really needs any explanation. It's just studying other magical traditions. Personally, I've been really enjoying studying hoodoo and voodoo, and I really can't wait until we get out of quarantine. I'll feel so lucky if I can get into a ring circle. I just think that that's on my bucket list now. Got to do that in my life. Really hope it happens. Maybe somebody watching this can help me make it happen. Okay, well, thanks for staying tuned and enjoy the new world that we're all making together here.